Hey, what's up? My name is Kevin and I'm the Helpful Hero, here to help you leverage the awesome power that is HubSpot. In today's video, I wanna go a little bit more in depth with one of my absolute favorite modules as what's in the Clean Pro theme, and that's the Magic Module. And literally, it can do so much. I've actually been using it a ton on my new product, Awesome AI. And one of the questions that I've been getting by a few people is how to do this little technique right here. And if you missed it, I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh the page and show it to you again. But essentially, it's how to have multi-layered images that can animate in at different times. And so in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can achieve this very same effect, utilizing the magic module in Clean Pro. So let's go ahead and quickly take a look at the existing awesome AI page. And I'm gonna just dissect it a little bit for you very quickly, and then we're gonna go into a brand new page and build it from scratch so that you can follow along. So right down here, if we look at this module right here, you're gonna notice, first things first, it is set up um, as a two column module with a column arrangement of six to six. And we do have a mobile stacking order or option added on here so that when it's on mobile, this column two, this one right here, can actually be positioned um, first in line. So that's another handy dandy little feature. And then if we go into column one, this is a content element of just a rich text. So I can turn dark and there's our text. Nothing too fancy there. But then if I go back over here to column two, here is where you're gonna see a lot of different uh, content image elements that have varying options that are all set up, which we're gonna go through in a lot more detail. I'm not gonna show you everything here because I don't wanna be redundant. I just wanna show you the gist of how this is set up. So let's go ahead, pop into a brand new tab, and we're gonna start to build this from the ground up. I hope by now you put me in like 2X chipmunk <laughs> tone of voice speed so that we can kind of get through this somewhat quickly. So first things first, let's go ahead and change the number of columns to two columns. Again, we have a bunch of different options, so it really depends on how big the images you have are, or how much you want them to take over that row. Six by six is what we've been using. Since I'm gonna have the image on the left, I want the image to show up first on mobile. So I'm gonna go ahead and change column one to position two and then column two to position one. So now let's go ahead and just apply changes, which I like to make a good habit of just so that I can see some of the things that I'm doing take effect pretty immediately. So now we're pretty cool here. So what we wanna do next is we wanna go into each of these columns. So here's our first content element. And as a reminder, what you can do is you can come down here and select from a variety of different, uh, what I call content elements. This text one is just a rich text editor, um, as you see here. So we're gonna go ahead and first things first, I'm just gonna say that we want to align this text to the right, and we'll do the same text to the right here. And then let's just add some copy here. One little thing that I've been doing lately is using um, their little AI widget to expand some of the placeholder copy and rewrite it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and insert whatever we have here. It actually looks like a, a good amount of copy. So we're gonna go ahead and save those changes. So now we have, well, quite a bit of copy. So you know what, let's just tone that back. And now let's go ahead and do really what this tutorial is all about, and that's the image layer and animation. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop on over to content column two. Now right off the bat, by default, you're gonna get a rich text module. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna change this to an image module. And this content element name, this is just for organizational purposes. So what I'll usually do is something like, base image. Now let's go ahead and look at our images and I'm gonna use exactly what I had used before. Um, so I'm gonna go into 
the awesome AI, graphics. Now we had this little graphic right down here, which is what I'm gonna add. Now the important part of this process is we wanna make sure that this base image is set right down here to position alignment. And typically what I like to do is center. On the base image, we never want to do a specific um, position and I'll show you why in just a moment. So essentially, I'll apply changes just so we can kind of see that take effect. One thing to note is if you're using graphics like this, I highly recommend, especially if it's gonna be a transparent image, to use an SVG file. They're super small, they can be any size. I've been loving using them. So definitely think about um, using an SVG. You wanna make sure that your images are optimized as possible, especially since you're gonna be using multiple of them. So if there's really big files, it's just gonna make your website really slow down. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is we can just come right over here and click add to add a new content element. So in this one, I think it was, well, let's just pop over here and see really quick. It's the call to action, it's a little video, and then it's our fun little GIF here. So what we're gonna do is I'll just say call to action image. I'll select image here. And then let's just go ahead and grab this little call to action right here. Now, if we apply changes and we just don't do anything else, that image is just gonna align right below. And obviously that's not what we want. So instead, what we wanna do is we wanna come down to the position alignment options. And in this case, we wanna do a specific position. So this is pretty cool because right out of the box, it's gonna give you some options that is going to allow you to set where that image falls within the main column container. So if we just hit apply changes, it's going to anchor up to the top left. So one thing that you can do is you can see how you can you know, align these with this slider. So for example, if I wanted to shift this, say down by 30 pixels and apply changes, you're gonna see kind of it shifts it down a little bit lower. In this case, what we wanna do, we'll shift it down by 50. And then on the horizontal side, what we can do is we can just check this box to start from the right hand side. So if I check that box and hit apply changes, now it's floating over there on the right hand side. So position done. Next part is the animation. So under the animation tab, what you can do is we can add an animation to a specific content element. And this is what makes the magic module so cool because you can get super creative with it. I mean, don't go like overboard, but you can definitely get creative. In this case, I'm really just a fan of like a simple fade in animation, which is then gonna open up um, some other options here. Now delay is one we're gonna use on the other images. Um, so we're not gonna use it here but speed is something that I definitely like to play with. In this case, I want it to like animate in slow and nice. So if we apply changes, um, note that when you're in the editor, you're likely not gonna see the actual animations. You're gonna have to go into a preview mode. So we'll do that in just a second, but let's just go through and add our other layered images. So this one is going to be the video image and we'll do image, come over here, we'll grab this one. Now again, this one was on the left-hand side, so we're gonna go and repeat this same process with the position alignment. We're gonna say specific, and then we want this one to drop kind of right down here. So we'll maybe do like 150 on the vertical alignment and see how that looks. Great, now obviously that image is way too large and in charge and not gonna look awesome. So if we scroll back up, this is where we're gonna use the size and you can use exact width and height. So for example, maybe we want this to be, let's just try 230 pixel width. And we're gonna go ahead and see how that looks. That actually looks quite a bit better, right? That's what our example looks like. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep it like that for the time being. Now we're gonna go down to the animations and we're gonna add that same fade in animation. 
And then this time we're gonna add a delay. So we're gonna add a half second delay. Speed, we're gonna still do slow. And we'll just apply changes, um, always good measure. And let's go ahead and do our last image. So if we do add, and this one is going to be the GIF image. My favorite, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> so I love that movie, it's so, such a classic. We'll select that. And then we're gonna basically go through this exact same process. So the first thing I like to do is, I like to come to position and alignment. Um, we're gonna do specific. We're gonna start it from the right hand side and then let's maybe bounce that down let's just see what 200 pixels look like. This takes a little bit of finessing, so it's just something to keep in mind. So maybe it could probably go down another 50 pixels because we are gonna make this image a bit smaller. So we'll see how that looks. Okay, it's, it's getting there. Now let's go ahead and just go right back up to the image size. And let's try making this, uh, let's just see 130 pixels and how that looks. Okay, a little small, but I'm not hating it. So maybe what I might wanna do in this case is I would probably bring it down maybe another 30 pixels. And this time I actually want to use the horizontal slider so we can kind of slide it in a little bit. So I might try to slide it in. We'll just try 30 pixels. So you can see how we're starting to kind of get it there. The vertical alignment, maybe we can go down one more. Let's see how that looks. Eh, that actually works out pretty well. Didn't really move too much, but it's fine for this example. Now we're gonna go down to the animations and then we wanna do a fade in. Again, this time we're gonna give it a one second delay so that these stagger along the way. So we'll stagger and then we're gonna go ahead and select slow. So let's go ahead and just like preview this, open it up in a new tab and see how this actually works. So now you can see that depending upon, depending upon our screen size, that is affecting the actual space that we have here. And this is a good thing to know. So one way that we would replicate what we have on our example is we can, ch can change the content width of this section. So what we would do is we would come into the module itself under the styles tab we would go to row settings and then we want to go to size now the standard width is something that you can easily edit in your theme settings to set a global width for this standard option in this case let's just try to go ahead with a custom width i'm going to do 1140 just to see how this actually looks right here doesn't change much in this view, but the more important view is gonna be this view. So now it's actually looking and working really, really, really well. Okay, so we're almost there. There's only one other thing to take into account and that is going to be the mobile view. So if we go ahead and look at this on mobile, how does this look? Actually, it looks pretty darn good. Not too bad. Obviously, there's some spacing um, issues up here that we would want to account for. And the way that we would do that is we would actually come into the row settings. And then we would come to, let's just close this. We would come to the spacing around the content. And then we would come all the way down to the mobile spacing options. And let's just go ahead and set this to, let's just say 200. We'll see how that actually works. So with 200, I go to the mobile view. Obviously, that's starting to look a bit better. Now, 200 is probably too much, so we could probably do maybe 120 and actually see how that looks. So you can see how that's already starting to take shape. One tip is if these images end up being too large for a mobile device, I'm gonna show you a cool trick using a smart rule if you need to kind of finagle yours into um, shape for a mobile device. And that's by using a smart rule. So the cool thing about smart rules is that you can come over and you can set it up based on, whoop, you can set it up based on device type. So I can say, okay, for this view, I'm gonna do mobile. 
we'll save that. And then now I can manage the editing for mobile versus our default or our test or our desk, de desktop view. So for example, I can come in here and let's just say on mobile, we wanted to make the video portion a lot smaller. I could come into the video image. I could come over here to the, the width. And again, this is just for example sake, we can make that 130. I'll apply those changes. Now again, although we are seeing this in a desktop view, this is actually for the mobile view. So you can see as if I go into the mobile option here, that gets much smaller. Whereas we can just pop over to the preview window again and I refresh this, that stays the same size because it's for desktop. At any rate, I hope this was a super helpful video for you as you get to learn more and more about the Magic Module and Clean Pro. The Magic Module is definitely one of those modules that you're going to want to master because you can be so creative with it and it can do so much. Plus, I'm gonna be adding a lot of more fun content elements to it to give you even more flexibility. And yeah, just, the ability to make an awesome, awesome website. With that, I'm out. If you have any questions or tutorials that you would love for me to make, definitely let me know. You can either drop a comment below or if you're viewing this on my Clean Pro tutorial page, just use that little button um, right up above and request a tutorial and I will make one specifically for you. All right, I'm out. Have a great day.